Okay, so this is a video to show um, my method of um, doing an acid um, wash, the um, mordant uh, tea wash blue solution um, on zinc sprayed work. I'm sure it's something that many folks are familiar with on galvanized work, but this is the result of um, zinc spraying. It's a kind of uniform, slightly kind of gritty feeling, um, blue-gray. Um, and then after, what I do is I, I wet it down, then give it um, a spritz with uh, the blue stuff and then um, slight burnish up some areas with wet and dry, um, wet and dry sandpaper. Um, so um, I've been doing it on the gate, the main gate, um, and I've done this side so far. As you can see, it's quite useful for you know, bringing out things like rivets and just, you know, bring out texture and whatever. On this side, I haven't done it yet. Um, so what I'll do is I'll set my um, phone up, I'll prop my phone up and just video the process. Um, it's It seems to be something that's quite, um, like, flexible in a sense, because maybe if you think... Um, like you haven't done it enough in one area, well then you can kind of just give it a bit more of a spritz and then, um, you know, hit it some more with the wet and dry. It's quite nice how it's, you know, these sorts of areas. And one, one thing I kind of like about um, this, this um, the result of this, is that it's it's reliable, you know, it's a, it's a good weatherproofing system, you know, as is GALV. Everything has swings and roundabouts, pros and cons of each. Um, but um, it's also, you know, it's, it's not very expensive. And um, it's, it's quite controllable, you know. So if you want to bring out, like, rivets more or something like that, then you can just give it um, a bit of a burnish up more on those specific areas and you can, um, you know, tweak and refine the process to suit whatever you want to do. wetting it down first of all. I wet it down because I kind of feel like the um, the tea wash um, becomes a little bit blotchy, like <clears throat> um, a bit like that sort of um, white and grey camouflage, like that kind of arctic camouflage. Um, if you put it on um, dry zinc spray, um, I find that if you wet it down first, it sort of helps it disperse a bit better. And um, I mean, it, does, it doesn't seem to prevent it from working in any way. It just seems to help it disperse a little better. And so, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give this a sanding down with the wet and dry. So I'll see how it comes up and then think, oh, well, if I want to add any more in certain areas, then I can spray up, um, I can spray, I can uh, do the, the mordant stuff on an area again to sort of re-darken it up and you know hit it with some wet and dry again and it's quite um it's quite responsive to um you know you're playing around with it. It doesn't seem to be like a one a one shot deal. And the 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 wet and dry isn't you know it's not grinding it off or anything, you're not like taking it back to bare steel by any stretch.
I'll pause. I'll pause doing that for a second, so I'll give that a rinse down, and then I'll um, bring the camera closer again, so you can see the effect of that. As this dries up, it becomes um, like uh, more noticeable. But so, for example, like you can start to see how um, you're getting the kind of burnished highlights. Um, so, for example, like that rivet versus these ones, which I didn't hit at all, and um, maybe like. Uh, sorry, give me two secs. Rest that back down. There you go. So the kind of surface texture of that, on, you know, picking up these highlights versus that which hasn't been done at all. And like I say, once you once it's dried down a bit, oh, actually this side's still a bit wet, but nevertheless you can kind of see that it you know it comes out even more once it starts to dry. I like it.